Hi, this is James at C2, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the importing and exporting of data to and from Dynamics CRM. Okay, so data can be imported from the settings area. So we navigate to settings, go to data management, and we go to the imports area. So, what we're about to do is import data to CRM, and that's done using this button here, the import data button. Before we import our data though, we do have to make sure that our data is in a decent setup. So, we go to our file. I have this an Excel spreadsheet which I want to import into CRM. CRM imports can be done from a variety of file types. We can use CSVs, we can use XML, or we can use comma separated text files. I want to use a CSV, so that's what we're going to do. I have a, an Excel spreadsheet here which has all of our, the details of our 100 contacts that we want to add to our system. Split into columns for first name, last name, the company they work for, the individual's postcode, the individual's phone number and their email address. It's good practice when you're setting up the file to have your column names the same as the field, the target field within CRM. You don't have to, but it does make it a lot simpler when you're importing the data if column names and the field names match, or are at least very similar. Now I want to save this as a CSV, so I'll go to File, I want to save as, I'm going to save that to my computer, and I'm going to save it as sample data as a CSV. So save that, and there we go. Okay, so back to CRM. So I go to my Import Data button, click on that, and this opens the Import Data Wizard. First thing it asks me to do is to browse the PC to find the source file that I want to upload. So we click on Browse, it'll take me to where I want to go, and I'm looking for Sample Data. And here is my file here. I hit open and then hit next and CRM will upload the file. So it's uploaded the file to itself. I can see the size of the file is 9 kilobytes. So I hit next and it asks which data map I want to use. I prefer to use the default one. So I'm going to use that, hit next. And what it then does is it looks at our data file and it asks what type of record do we want to import. I want to import these lists of individuals as contacts, so I shall select contact from this list, hit next, and then CRM will compare the source file against the CRM and make suggestions on which fields it thinks should be mapped together. Now because our source field has a column called last name, and there is a field in the contact record with last name, CRM assumes that those two are to be mapped together. It can be changed if you wish. I don't want to change that. I want last name to be copied over to last name. For company name, if we look at what that does, is it does a lookup to the companies which exist in the system. If I click on here, it asks what record type do you want to refer that to? Now, I want to refer that to the account and asks what type of data do we have in this field. Is it the account primary key or is it the account name? We have the account name, so if I click on the lookup icon here, I'm going to take primary key out. Hit OK, and now what it'll do is it'll reference the value that's in the source file account, and it'll reference that to the account name. So I hit OK, I want email to be mapped to email, first name to first name. Now in phone number, we have a column called phone number in our source file, but there is no field called phone number on the contact record, so I need to select which field I want to map this to. For our purposes, I want to map that to business phone, so I'm going to select that from the list, so phone number will map to business phone, postcode will be mapped to address one zip postal code. So we have last name going to last name, company name looking up to company name, email to email, first name to first name, phone number to business phone and postcode to address one zip postal code. Once you're happy with the way the map has been set up, you click next. You can edit your source map if you want. I don't want to, I want to keep it the way it is. So I'll hit next. 
and it then asks, do you want to allow duplicates? Now, in some circumstances, you will want unique records for each of your contacts. In some circumstances, you may allow duplicates. I don't want to allow duplicates, so I'm going to leave this option as no. For the data map name, if I put something in here, I'm going to put contact import. If I then come to do a later import, this data map will be available for me to use. So I'm going to hit submit. It gives me a little status update that the data has been submitted for import. To check the status of import, go to settings, data management, imports. I'm going to click finish to finish the process because I'm already on that screen. So if I hit finish, here we go. We can see that our sample data has been submitted. So far, it hasn't processed anything, but it is quite quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh that just to see how long it takes. So I'm going to refresh that. It changes to parsing. It's now transforming. And once it changes to importing, it's quite a quick process. I see it's done 20 already of the 100. Refresh that again. There it is. We've done 100 imports of 100 successfully. If you want further information, you can double click on your import file here. And if you see down the side here, you can see a list of all contacts which were fully imported as part of this import, any contacts that were partially imported, and any failures. If I click on failures, we haven't had any, but if you have had any failures, you'll get in the description, it'll tell you why the import of that record failed, it'll tell you which column it appears in, what the value of that column is, and what row under source here, which row of your original spreadsheet that the error occurred. If I click on contacts fully imported, you'll see a full list of all your contacts there. And just to show you that this has worked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my list of contacts and we'll do a little search for Elton Ramos. This man here, so we'll just check he has actually been imported. So I'll go to the sales area. I'll go to contacts. And I'm going to look for records which begin with Elton. There's Mr. Elton Ramos, and that shows us his file, his record was successfully imported. That is how easy importing data is in CRM. Now, if, for example, I realised that I have uploaded the wrong information, or I should not have imported all of that data, if we go back to our settings area, to data management and imports. This is our record here, so I'm going to highlight it so it's in use. If we go to the delete button up here and you'll see there's a drop down arrow to the side of it. If you click on that and go to all records imported to this entity during this import, if you click that button, it will ask you to confirm it. It will ask you if you want to also receive an email when the import has finished. I don't. And in addition to deleting imported records, also delete the import job history. There's no need for me to keep the information there that this was done, so I'm going to tick that box and click OK. I'm going to quickly refresh that and all of those records will now be gone. So I'm going to prove that by going back to Elton Ramos. We'll refresh the page because he's still there. There we go. We do a search on Elton now. Elton Ramos no longer exists in our system. Now, to show you how easy this import tool is to work, I'm going to now upload all of those contacts that I've just deleted, but I'm not going to import them as contacts. I'm going to import them as leads. Now, you may notice import data is at the top of a lot of screens. I personally prefer to always do it through settings, but you don't need to. If you're in any view, import data will be in the top ribbon bar here, or if it's not, if you look at the more commands, it will appear in the list of more commands there. I'm going to do it through settings, simply because that's the way I like to do it. So we'll go into imports. I'm going to import data. Now this time it's the same spreadsheet I want to upload, which is sample data. So I'm going to open that. I'll click next next because it has uploaded this time you see this contact import the one that we saved last time that is there for use but i don't want to import contacts i want to import leads so i'll use default automatic mapping again this time 
I'm going to, instead of mapping it to contacts, I'm going to map this to leads. So we'll go to lead, hit next. This time it looks at last name. I'm going to not use the topic. Phone number I shall also import to business phone, postcode. This time on the lead record it's not called address one zip postal code, it's called zip postal code. So we'll hit next. It gives me a warning that some fields are not mapped, so I'll hit OK. Hit next. I'm going to save this for use next time by calling it lead import. I'll hit submit and there we go. Again, it may take a few seconds or a few minutes to start, but we'll just refresh. And there we go, it's transforming. It's now importing, it's done 50. And there we go, we now have 100 leads uploaded to the system. And to show you them in the system, we'll go to sales area, go to leads. Let's see if Elton Ramos is in this list. There we go, Elton Ramos is now saved as a lead within CRM. And that is how simple it is to import data to CRM. So what we're now going to show you is how to export data from CRM, which is almost, if not easier than importing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our list of leads. I'm going to refresh that to see everybody. So there is our list of open leads. And you'll notice beside the import data, there's an export to Excel button here. I'm going to click export to Excel and it'll ask which type of worksheet you want to export to. Do you want to export to a static worksheet with records from this page? Static worksheet with records from all pages in the current view? Dynamic pivot table or dynamic worksheet? I'm going to select the static worksheet with records from this page. And I'm also going to tick the make this data available for re-importing by including required column headings. I'm going to tick that to show you how this works. So I'm going to tick it hit export and there it is do I, it asks do I want to open or save this new file now I'm going to save it I want to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it CRM lead export so I'm going to save that and now I'm going to open it to open that with XML handler so I'll open that I'll go back to my desktop, it is CRM lead export, if I open the file, and so our spreadsheet opens, and as we can see, we have our lead record name here, we have the first name, middle name if it exists, last name, topic, state, reason, blah, 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 blah. What you will notice is because I made this available for re-import, is that there are now some hidden columns. You notice our spreadsheet starts at D. If I unhide those columns, here we have a GUID for our lead. So because each record has its own GUID, it can be individually recognized by the system. So what it does is we then use this data and re-import it. So if maybe we make some changes to the record or we add extra data into our CSV, we can then re-import it and we have a GUID available for use. So when we come to re-import it, CRM knows which record should be referenced to which record within CRM. It's as simple as that. So, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up or like it. If you're interested in a free trial or you require any other information from C2 Software, please just get in contact using the contact information at the bottom of the screen. Thanks for listening.